Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got a debut on the channel today, but also this apparently is the first Sudoku ever constructed by the constructor. I'm, I'm, I can't even pronounce his name very well. I've, be, I've been practicing before I turned on the webcam. Tamartanarlet? Tamartanarlet? Could that be right? Um, the puzzle's called XX Sandwich. And we've had it recommended a lot. And I snipped some of the comments on Logic Masters just before I turned on the camera. And basically, you can see if you just read down, brilliant break in, excellent debut, uh, a great puzzle. Um, it's getting a lot of love. So I'm looking forward to trying this. It's got four stars out of five for difficulty. Um, so make of that what you will. Perhaps judge from the video length how difficult I've found it. Um, but this is what I'm going to be attempting in today's puzzle. It's beautiful setup, isn't it, with this sort of this crossage of X's in the middle box. Um, anyway, before we kick off, a few things to mention. Um, firstly, do have a look, if you haven't had a go yet, at yesterday's puzzle, The King by Justin Vitanza. Um, this is proving an extremely popular puzzle uh, with good reason. Um, it's, it's actually a bit emotional to solve it, but I won't I won't explain why. Um, but but definitely, if you like Fog of War, or even if you don't, do try that puzzle. It's it's well worth it. Um, next, I was hoping to stream this week, but as you may be able to hear from my voice, I am a little bit under the weather, um, and therefore it might be better if we delay a week. If that's all right, um, I'm not feeling I'm not feeling a hundred percent, and so it, it it might be more sensible. So apologies for that, um, but. It'll be, it should be either Tuesday or Wednesday next week, providing I'm better by then. Um, now, let's do some birthdays and other things. In fact, I'm going to start off with something absolutely lovely that's been sent to me from Argentina. Um, it's a baby video, and it's a, it's, a, it's a baby called Sol. And Sol is one year and seven months old, and she's been listening and, and what, well, watching Cracking the Cryptic videos since birth but listening to Cracking the Cryptic videos since before she was born. And her mum, Diana, has sent me just, look, I've got to share this with you. Let me show you this. Look, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear what happens when she hears the Cracking the Cryptic music. Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition. Hey, get it, go here. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that absolutely adorable? Um, so, yeah, I was absolutely stoked to see that. Diana, thank you for sending us that. Oh, oh yes, there was something else I was meant to mention. Diana is a maths teacher um, and um, I think has a student who's around 17 years old who is looking for ideas uh, to do a, an assignment combining maths and Sudoku somehow. So if anyone has any good ideas, drop a comment on the video and we can uh, we can certainly pass that information on. Um, now, let's do some birthdays as well. Um, Ty Anna, Ty Anna, you've, you've turned 25 and I, I hear that you enjoy watching and trying to solve the puzzle. So thank you very much for doing that. And I hope you have a brilliant birthday today with, of course, chocolate cake. Um, now, speaking of chocolate cake, the next uh, the next announcement is not for a birthday, but it's for a first wedding anniversary. Abigail and Guy, um, it's your first wedding anniversary. And Guy was kind enough to send me a picture of the cake involved in, in the celebration. So let me show you this. <laughs> now this, is a chocolate cake with raspberry buttercream and cream cheese mix filling and proper frosting. Now, I ha I mean, I will give you, this does look absolutely excellent. Um, so Abigail and Guy, I'm sure, well, you've obviously had some already. <laughs> it does look like a terrific cake. But if I was to pull you up, I would say there is rather a lot of cake here compared to icing. What we need to do is to reverse the ratios of cake to icing in this cake and then it will be absolutely perfect that's my advice and i hope you have a great anniversary um, today now next um amy you've turned a secret age which i couldn't possibly well i can possibly share it because if you're watching this video you're obviously one of my favorite people 
Um, so Amy might have turned 45 today. And I know this because your husband, Jeremy, wrote in. Um, and, well, actually, I heard that, Amy, you also teach, um, uh, I think, at the local university. And you've been using clips from our videos to try and um, help explain things on occasion. So, Amy, thank you for doing that. Um, it's, it's amazing where this little old channel ends up. Um, and happy birthday for today. Brandon, over in Arizona, you've turned 42 today. Something I think you've been looking forward to ever since you got into Douglas, Douglas Adams um, as a schoolboy. Uh, and no, I refuse to read any Vogan poetry to celebrate your, ce celebrate your birthday. However, um, no, Vogan poetry, we're not going there, but have a great, great day anyway. Um, Nathan, you've turned 23 today on the 23rd of September. I know this because your friend Johanna wrote to us. Is that Johanna or Johanna? I'm not sure. I know you're over in Iceland. Um, and Nathan, I hope you have a great 23rd birthday. And then Nick. Nick, over in, in the Chicago area, that's a guess, that might not be right. You've turned the big 4-0 today, and I know this because your wife, well, is it Sarah or is it Sarah? You see, it could be either, and if you don't guide me, I won't know. Um, uh, I'm not, I really, I'm not sure. I've got a friend who spells her name that way, and she's Sarah, but I know some people do use Sarah for that spelling, so I'm not sure. Oh. So, but anyway, Nick, your wife, your wife, you'll, you'll know how she says her name. Um, she, she wishes you a very happy birthday and said that you often watch to wind down with your dog. I hope the dog gets a lot out of it. Must be quite a, a dog that's very, um, yeah, a very sensible dog if it watches Cracking the Cryptic. Anyway, let's turn our attention to some solving now. Um, I don't think I've got any other news for you. And I must preserve my voice. Let's have a look at Double X Sandwich by Tamarta Narlet. Tamarta Narlet. That might be right. <laughs> These are the rules of the puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So imagine this uh, was a chess knight, it could jump to lots of different cells around the grid, all of those purple ones. And therefore, let's say that this digit was a one. None of these purple digits here could be the digit one. That would not work because they would, you'd have two ones, a knight's move apart, and that's going to break the rules of this puzzle. Um, digits in cages must sum to the value shown. Okay, so those three add up to 14, those three to 15, etc. And digits along an arrow sum to the number in the attached circle. And all arrows go in a straight line. Oh, well, I would have assumed that, actually. But yes, OK, I can see how there could be. Um, it, I suppose it is possible that this arrow would go to here and then turn right. Um, but no, that is not what's going on. So the arrow goes in a straight line. So this, this uh, what you do is you add up those two digits. Let's say this was four and five. They would add up to nine, so it would look like this. Four, five, whoops, nine. That's how the puzzle works. Do you have a go? The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, the first thing I can see is somewhat disconcerting, and that is that... Now, I wondered if I could use the secret on row two, but no, that, that doesn't feel right. Um, if we look at all of these cages in the grid, I think each of them has at least three options. Eight dominoes, they can be one, seven, two, six, or three, five. A nine triple can be one, two, six, one, three, five, or two, three, four. I don't actually know all the, all the options for the 20 cages. I think there are three though, aren't there? I think there's, don't use, don't use a nine and it's five, seven, eight do use a nine. Oh no, maybe there are more. There might be four ways of doing that. Nine, uh, nine, four, seven, nine, five, six, nine, three, eight. Yeah, there are, yeah, so there are lots of different ways, four different ways of doing that. Goodness only knows how many ways there are of doing 14 in three cells or 15 in three cells, but it's a lot. So it must be something to do with this XX arrangement and possibly combined with the knight's move. 
So. Well, okay, let's have a quick look at this square. Where is that square in box five seems a reasonable question. And the reason that looks interesting to me is you obviously can't put the digit in the circle of an arrow in either of the arrow cells along the arrow, because if this was the situation, what would this digit be? That would have to be a zero, wouldn't it? Um, well, you know, because if we're saying this is, let's say this was eight, um, eight would require a zero to make the arrow work. So, and the knights move rules out those two. So the green cell is in one of those two squares and that logic is symmetrical. So the first thing I'm seeing here actually is that, let's make that blue, is that these four circles, which are ab initio, don't look well, Sudoku doesn't seem to be telling us that these four circles are different digits, but they are all different digits because of where they end up in, in box five. You know, there is no possibility that green and blue can be the same number because green in box five is down here. Sorry, blue in box five is down here and green is up here. So these are four different numbers, each of which is at least three because each arrow must be at least a one, two pair. So three, four, five, six is the minimum. And right, and if you did put, if that digit there went on the other, on the cross of the other arrows, then these two digits would definitely be bigger than this one. Now that's a little bit interesting. So whatever that is, if it did go, it's only got two positions it can go in box five. If it does go on the other arrow, then purple and blue can't go on this arrow because otherwise you're going to get into an iterative world of nonsenses. Let me show you what I mean. If that's a five and we put the five there, and then we try and claim, you can see both the purple and blue are now definitely bigger than five. So you can't put purple or blue here because, you know, that's going to imply maths doesn't work. So, so only one of the colors could be on the opposite cross. But in fact, none of them need to be on the opposite cross because they could all sit quite comfortably in the corners of box five probably so I mean it's very likely these are going to be low numbers isn't it because well hmm, actually maybe that's not actually I'm not sure because every single cell in there is, is sort of on two arrows. So, so although I feel that some of these do have to be low, maybe it doesn't have to be those two. But, okay, if that was a very low number, this, this one very specifically here, let's make it uh, red for a moment, oh, no, I can't. But then this square here, if that was a one, for example, that because of the knight's move constraint, you couldn't put a one in the nine cage. And that would be two, three, four. So if that is a low number, and by low, I mean one, two, and three, a nine cage always needs two of the digits from one, two, and three. It's either one, two, six, one, three, five, or two, three, four, as we said earlier. So if that was low, there would be a sort of triple of low digits in those squares. That couldn't be low then nor could that for that matter um it looks like it's trying to do but I, I feel it's very hard for this to be high yeah in fact that's that's a maybe that's what we have to do where where are the high digits in box five i was i mean i was going to say this can't be high or that it could be high, but it's putting pressure on the 20 cage, because if it's, 
I mean, if it's eight, you can't put eight in the 20 cage because of the knight's move constraint. But actually, it, can't, it just can't be eight, can it? Because if it was eight, the minimum these two arrows could be, or these two cells could contain, would be one and two. And one of them is therefore a two. And the two would be added to eight and get to a double-digit number. So nine and eight in box five are definitely off arrows. Now, if you put seven on an arrow... How does that work? Then you'd have to have one and two. Um, so this would have. Oh well, okay. That well, that can't be seven. That I can tell you because if that's seven, this is eight and nine. And one thing we can't do is make, well, in fact, that, that totally breaks the 20 cage. But you can't make 20 if you can't use 8, 9. And if, if you couldn't actually use 7 either. So if, if there was a 7 on an arrow, it would have to be in one of those three squares. Now, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because if you put the 7 there, then these have to be the 1, 2 pair. And these would be eight and nine. Oh, I see. Ah, all right. So that can't be seven either. Um, let me just show you why that is. If this is seven, because we've got to keep these two arrows now to be single digit totals, these squares would be a one, two pair. These would be an eight, nine pair. But look, green is, well, green's actually here, but it wouldn't matter if it was here. The point is that you can't put green in there at all because of because of the knight's move constraint. And green can't go here because of Sudoku. So green and purple would be ruled out of the 20 cage. Yeah, oh, okay. Right. Actually, I think I'm getting somewhere now because that, that doesn't just work here and therefore by symmetry here. It actually also works here, because these two would be an 8-9 pair, and by, by this sort of logic that takes these two digits into these squares, again, you couldn't put those digits in here at all. And 5-6-7 is not enough, so right, so now we've actually managed to get down to sevens eights and nines are in the sort of dice move positions or a five dice um in box five so what about six then so if we put six here then these two squares are at least from seven eight nine so two digits from seven, eight, nine would not be available for here. Which feels like it would be tricky. No, 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 I'm wrong. Because you could put five, six, nine in, couldn't you? Five, six, nine adds up to 20. So the fact that I would get rid of two of the digits, seven, eight, nine is not enough. Oh, um, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, but it, ha. Huh. Okay, but it is true to say. Uh, okay, a more general, just forgetting for a moment about seven, eights, and nines, and thinking about colours. It is it is true to say that whatever green is, it doesn't live in any of the. It doesn't live in any of those squares. Because whatever it is, it ends up in one of these two. And therefore gets taken out of these two by the knight's move constraint and it can't be in its own column and that logic and it obviously can't be in its own box so this collective of four cells yeah 
there's something going on about how many digits yes yeah, so sorry let me just to finish the thought um so what i'm thinking is that that logic obviously applies to orange to blue to purple as well so so these four digits simply do not exist within the yellow digits of which there are six and there can't be yeah there can't be more than two digits in common between the 20 cage and the nine cage because imagine i don't know um it's actually hard to think of a very good example but imagine three and five were common between this cage and this cage well then you could complete the nine cage with a one but to complete the 20 cage you'd need a 12 and 12 is not a sudoku digit the difference of 11 between the two is too much to be catered for with one sudoku digit or one digit's worth of difference so what that means is that there are well there are only nine sudoku digits and we know that these digits don't live in any of these six digits so don't i need there to be five different don't these ha these have to have one in common because if they had none in common there would be 10 different sudoku digits in the world so yeah okay so yeah yellow has one digit in common so there is one digit now what's that digit got to be then so but it could be three and then this is completed with three eight nine and this is completed either with two four or one five Hmm. Okay. Oh, this is. Uh, there's something going on here. I, just can't, I haven't quite got it, but I think I think we're on the right lines. So the nine different Sudoku digits. Comprise five digits between. Five, there are five different digits here and four different digits here. But we know, or do we know? But I'm okay. I, ah, I've got, I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think my brain is being a bit slow today because of my cold but the, the um yeah so so because we know, look at look at the colored digits for a moment now one thing i can tell you about all of these digits is that they don't include 1 and 2 because they are the sum in each case of at least two different numbers so none of the colored digits are 1 or 2 that means 1 and 2 live in yellow because the t because all of the Sudoku digits are represented by five different cells in yellow and four different cells in the colored digits. So one and two now have to be in here and one and two can't be in a 20 cage because if you put one or two in a 20 cage, the other two digits would be too big to be Sudoku, Sudoku digits or at least one of them would be. So this means that the nine cage is one, two, six because it must contain the one and the two that is absolutely brilliant and the common digit therefore is six so there is a six in the 20 cage along with two digits that add up to 14 that are not six eight because that would put two sixes in the 20 cage so they are five and nine and now and now we're away aren't we because now the panoply of digits that fill up yellow are one two five six and nine so the digits that go into the colored squares are the other digits which are three four seven and eight that is magnificent that is very very peculiar but absolutely magnificent isn't that 
I mean, I don't really believe this is your first puzzle to mar to Martin Arlet, um, because that that is so it's so well executed. <laughs> oh, that eight cage is a one seven cage now because it can't be three five or two six. So one of these is a three. And that's going to have one and right. That's going to have one and two on its arrow. Well, this can't be a one or a two, because if if that was a one, it would rule itself out of the nine cage. If it was a two, it would rule itself out of the nine cage. So the three is not down there. So there is a three in one of these two cells, definitely. And one of okay. So this is a one or a two, because either this arrow or this arrow. Oh, this this arrow here is a one-two pair. This eight cage isn't one seven, because you if you try and put one in either of these squares, you'll eliminate one from these two squares. So this is two six or three five. Um. Now, so actually, this being a one or a two means that this square is actually just green. I'm actually going to get rid of my seven, eight, nines. I think that was not how to do this. That can't be green. So this is definitely green and is four, seven, or eight. Similarly, that can't be orange. So that is definitely orange and is four, seven, or eight. One of these is one or two. Um, and sorry, it's probably obvious what I've got to do here, but I'm not seeing it immediately. I'm going to pencil mark one or two into one of these. So nine is in one of those three squares now. And how do we how do I think about this clearly? That digit is in one of those squares. Um maybe, maybe I need to introduce more colours. Oh so this this square here, where does it go in box? Two. It's got to be in one of those two squares. Now, um, how does this work? If this was three, four, then the common digit on You'd have to have a one of these would be one two and one of these would be one three. You'd need a one on on both the arrows, which would put one in the cross. And this would be a two three pair. And these would be seven and eight. So this digit would be five. Yes, okay, is that actually, is that the way to think about this? Yes, it is. Okay, um, so let's just think about the possible arrow totals that we need. We know that one arrow is a three arrow. So that, I don't know which one it is, it's one of these two, but that, that arrow is going to be a one two pair. The four arrow, wherever that lives, is going to be a one three pair. So I know that these cells definitely, definitely include one, two, and three. Um, and I know that I need to get to seven and eight using only those digits, don't I? So I feel like the other digit needs to be Well, 
actually let's be careful we can't put okay this this digit here can't be six can it so i can't do six one six one and six two which would be a natural way to do it although could i put the six i need yeah i need the six to deal with the seven and the eight Actually, no, I'm, I'm still not sure. I know, okay. I know I need ones, twos, and threes. Is there some... Or maybe a different way of doing it then, is just to add them up. <laughs> what is the sum? Uh, we've got 22 there, haven't we? We've got 22... So the digits are the digits which are all doubled because each one of these is counted twice and we know include one two and three must be one two three and five so these are one two three and five just by maths in the end that's how i've been forced to do this um and the fact that this is one or two means one of these is one or two so this is not one or two so this is three or five One of these is one or two. But do we know? So do I now have to? How do we do? How do we do this? Um, if if these, I want I want to put the three and the four in one you know in sort of one one box so i want this to be three four and i want this to be seven eight that's just how i feel it's going to work um and then this would be five and this would be a two three pair and that feels to me like it works that digit whatever it is is in one of those two cells isn't it um, so, six is in one of, oh, nearly, six is in one of these three squares, but six could be here if this is six, and it could be here if this is six. Ah, bobbins, um... Neither of the, okay, neither of these can be eight, can they? Because if either of these was was eight, we need we we can't have a one or a two here in the sum because we're only the highest sum we're going to get to is a five plus a three. That's how we're going to make the eight work. So we don't use a one or a two in that. So the eight is down here and the eight is not up there. which means neither of these squares is an 8, and this square is not an 8. So there is definitely an 8 in one of those two squares, just as I suppose there's definitely a 3 in one of those two squares. Now, has that helped at all? And the, oh, hang on. No, hang on, that's bad. No, and, and it's wrong. It's wrong. Okay, I said there was an 8 in one of those two. That's totally true. It does not work the other way around, does it? The 3 being in one of these doesn't mean one of those is a 3, because this absolutely could be a 3, which is not the same with the 8s. This cannot be an 8. So actually, all we know is that one of these 3 is a 3. Oh, goodness, I am... Um... So, <laughs> what does that mean? I hear you ask. I don't know yet. Um, it might be, we might need more colouring here or something. Or, in, or in a perversely, I might need less colouring because I feel like I'm getting daunted by the colouring now. Could we... Uh, 
I don't know. I'm not at all sure, actually. This digit is three or five, and that digit is going to be in one of those squares in box. Yeah, OK, I'm going to get rid of the colouring for those squares because I don't I don't think that's helping me. I think we've sort of exhausted that, haven't we? But what I do want to do is to say that digit is in one of those two squares by Sudoku. In case that sheds some sort of light on the world for me. Um, now, if this was a three, then this couldn't be a one because I know one of the arrows needs to add up to four and that would put that those that arrow needs to have a three and a one on it so if this was three this would be two and one of these would be one and one of these would be five well, that might be fine if this was five then one of these is three and there are no arrows that add up to five so this would be a one so this would be one five and this would be two three and these would be seven eight and these would be seven eight <laughs> and these would be three four And, and in that world, these would be three, four. I think. Oh, hang on. No, no, no. Now I'm confused. That doesn't work. I can't put three in these positions because these are three. Oh, I see. Oh, dear, dear, dear. It's very simple. Right. In fact, in fact, this is ironic. I'm going to go back a moment to here. Now, what we could have said, and what you've all been shouting me at, at me about, and I apologise, but look, I know one of these is a three, so I know the three in this box is down here, so these can't have a pencil mark three in, and now I've got a one, two, five, triple, and that is a three. Oh, goodness me, Simon, sorry. Oh, but that means one of these is a one, because I need a four arrow, so this is a two. So one of these is a two. Oh, yeah, my two my two key on my keyboard is basically given up the ghost all but. Um, and it only works some of the time, which is slightly worrying. Right, so I get a 1-5 pair here now. Which means these squares are actually 4 and 8, look, by mathematics. So these squares are 3 and 7 by mathematics. And therefore, neither of these can be a 7. Um these squares being 4 and 8 forces these to be 4 and 8. One of these is a 7. Oh, I see. So these become a 6, 7, 9 triple. But this one can't be a 7 because if this is a 7, you'd knock 7 out of both of these digits. So we're getting a little bit tidier in terms of what's going on. And presumably... There's going to be some way of knowing. Uh, we haven't actually got very much more information, have we? Three is down here. No threes in the corner in the bottom row. Um, three can't go in the 14 cage because this three takes care of those two squares because of the knight's move. Oh! My 8 cage hasn't got 2 in it anymore. So this is 3, 5. Well, that's... That is interesting. <laughs> okay, I can see what that means right that this this is absolutely beautiful let me just oh whoopsie let me just highlight that for a moment 
So we've just learned that this is a 3-5 pair. And what that the reason that interested me is I could see the options for these two squares include th included 3 and 5. And what would happen if this was a 7? Well, we have a, the, the world doesn't work then. Because if this is 7, we know this is 3, obviously, and this is 5. So this would be a 3-5 pair. And that square could not exist in the world. And that square does want to exist, and we want it to exist in the world. So this can't be 7, it has to be 3. So that's 3, that's 7, that's 5, that's 1. Uh, oh, I see, that, that unwinds the bottom as well. So that does all this. And that might do something. It means, oh, it means 7. I can get 7 in the middle box. Four in um, in box two is in one of two places. Three is in exactly one place apparently. Seven is in one of two places. Could we do? Oh, is there something going on with one in this box? One can't be there anymore or there. So one is in one of two places. So one is in one of three places in box three. Five. Yes, where's five in this bottom box? It can't be there by night's move, so it goes there. So five, seven, nine. This is now a six by Sudoku. This is a five, nine. It's all resolved by Sudoku from the bottom of the grid. This can't be one, that can't be two, and that can't be six. And we're going to get chocolate teapotted here, are we? Okay. No, we're not, actually, because nine and six get resolved by this. That gives me one, two, oh, see, they might do. It went wrong. One, two, six there. So now it should not be beyond the wit of Simon to place two here. I should be able to get that digit, which seems to have to be a one. And we're left with four and eight. Oh, okay. Well, I'm left with four and eight, but I don't mind that because of what I've noticed is I've got a seven here. So that must be the seven in my one seven cage. Now, what's looking in here? The five is. So the five goes in, the three goes in. There's no... Th oh, we already worked out there was no three in my 14 cage from this three. What about this four eight? Uh, don't know actually. All right, let's let's change type. Let's do Sudoku. Um, one six seven nine. That is six seven or nine. It can't be one. So one is in one of those three positions. This is a pattern you sometimes see in Knight's Move Sudoku. If you ever see this pattern, remember it means there is a 1 in one of those two squares. Actually, that is interesting. I'm going to use that. Um, because imagine there wasn't a 1 in one of those two squares. So let's take the 1s out. You can see that would put, cause the 1s either to be in that uh, disposition or this disposition, both of which see each other by Knight's Move. So that is impossible. So there is a 1 in here. In one of those, there is a one here, but that one sees those two by night's move. So there's a one in one of two places, which means these aren't ones. Ah, there we go. And there's a one looking in here. That's beautiful. So the ones get fixed. This is six, seven or nine by Sudoku. We could probably do more with ones here. Let's try and do that. One is in one of two places in box four. No, no, it's not, because now I've got to look. Let me do this a bit more slowly. Sorry, I'm sort of flying around here for a moment. But ones are in this one knocks out these two squares. So one is in one of those two squares in box seven. That's placing one in my 14 cage. Ah, all right, these two digits are have to add up to 13 and they're not 6 7 by sudoku so they're either 5 8 and they're not 5 8 because i've got an 8 here this is beautiful 
this, that 8 sees both those squares. So this is 4, 9. And there's a 4 here. So this is 4. This is 9. 4 is in one of two places in row 6. This 4 looks at that one. 9. Oh, nearly. Very nearly. 9 is in a domino. Uh, 9's in one of two places in box 1. I've only got I've only got the 15 gauge left. Apart from that, it's got to be Knight's Move Sudoku, which is slightly terrifying. Three is in one of two places. Uh, golly gosh, I don't know actually. Um, let's try. 9 in column 7, can't go there, here, 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 so it's in one of those two, can we get rid of either of those? No, <laughs> I don't think I can, okay, so that's no use, um, no, oh look, no, nearly, oh if this was 9, that doesn't work. Right, where's 9 in box 9 is a good question. Because by Sudoku it's in one of these two. Now if it was here, these two squares would have to add up to 6. And they couldn't be 1, 5. So they would be 2, 4. But that 2 sees both of the positions. So this is 9. Now didn't that... Oh no, that's not going to help. That was sort of the question we were, we were mulling over, wasn't it? Bother. Okay. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's that's not the most intelligent thing we've ever done. All right, let's try something else. What else could we look at here? Um, the thing is, <laughs> we've got such little information in columns seven, eight, nine, and columns one, two, three. All right, let's try. Let's try column three. We need two, five, six, eight. I'm actually, I'm actually just going to... Oh, I see. Where's 2? Where's 2 in this column is a good question. This 2 knocks out those 2, and that 2 knocks out that one. So 2 goes here. So 2 is in one of those squares. And we're, we're left in this column with 5s, 6s, and 8s. Now, can we do any better? That, uh, uh, that can't be 5 by Sudoku. Oh, no, actually, that can't be six. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why, when I look at this square, do I see that before I see that? That shows where my priorities lie. Um, okay, so eight is now in one of those three squares. This row needs three, four, five, seven. And let's actually just pencil mark it. See if we can spot things. That can't be four because it four sees that one. Uh, bobbins. Um, that can't be five or three. Five because of this one, three because of this one. So that is four or seven. And it's going to find a friend here that has to live down here in this neck of the woods. But, oh dear, um, I can't see how to do it. Okay, I'm going to try row two, two, three, four, and eight. Let's <laughs> see if that yields anything more. That can't be three. That, oh, this, this one sees a four, eight pair. So that's very restricted. That's only two or three. Now, can we see, is there a way of restricting that further? Well, there may be, but I'm not seeing what it is. Five, six pair here. Um, five. Oh, there we go. Five is in the same positions as four, believe it or not. Down here. 
So this can't be 5, because if this was 5, it would knock 5 out of both of those squares. So that's down to 3 or 7. Ah, that can't be 7. If this was 7, these two squares would add up to 8. Now, 7, 1 doesn't seem to work because of my 1. Pa oh, no, 7, 1 doesn't work. That's just true. 4, 4 won't work. There's two 4s in that. And 3, 5 won't work because this can be neither 3 nor 5. So that needs to be 3, which means that's 3 if we trust our pencil marking. <laughs> uh, always a dangerous thing to do, but we will, we will give it a go. Um... We can probably do some calculations on these two squares, but let's just see if we can do a bit more Sudoku before we have to resort to that. Oh, Bobbins. Uh, maybe, maybe we are going to have to. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Here's a good question. Where's three in this column? Now, actually... Because of these threes, it's in one of these three positions, but this three knocks out those two, so that has to be three. And yeah, that doesn't seem to do anything at all. These two squares have to add up to 12. So this is either an 8 or it's a 5, 7 to go with the 5 or 7 here. Now this can't be 5, so that can't be 7. Oh... Which means, well, is that helpful or not? I don't think it quite is, actually. It's close, but not good enough. I think we maybe should look at this row, though, because we've got this floating 4-5 pair in it. So we need two sixes and eights to finish it off. Now, can we, get, can we use any... That can't be eight by knight's move. Oh, it's close, isn't it? But it's not good enough. What about that one? Is that going to get rid of anything? Not so as I could see. Not easily, anyway. Um, two, seven, eight, nine in this row. Seven and eight look there. So that square's only two or nine. Is that good? That is good. Because remember we said 2 is in one of those squares. So this can never be 2. So that's just a 9. Now that might do something. That gives me a 6-7 pair here. Which means this is a 9. Oh, it doesn't see the 9 there. Rotten thing. Uh, does it do... Yes. It gets me a 9 in the corner of the puzzle. Right up there. That does resolve that 9 in box 1. six seven pair here takes six out of this square so these oh this must be resolved because these these are a two eight pair now these two squares here now what does that see nothing oh bother okay so these are two seven and eight it really doesn't it doesn't quite work does it um oh <laughs> very clever but an ah no what i was about to say is nonsense so we will restrict our mouth from uh, uttering such calumny um what about five in row seven i think it could go there but otherwise it has to be there Five is in one of oh five's in one of those two squares in box seven. I've just noticed. Is that helpful? Possibly not. Um, it's hard to know where to look when you're doing night smooth Sudoku's because there's an ah oh, it's. What about one? That one is seeing that square. That's rather nice. So this is a one, which means this is a one. 
Now that took the pencil mark position of a two, so I'm gonna get a two here. Oh, look at it, it won't go in. So that's, oh, that's two, that's eight. So this is not two. Two is in one of those two squares. We got an eight for the price of the two there. So this becomes two, seven, that becomes six, that becomes eight. This is not eight anymore. This is eight by Sudoku, that's useful. Look, that gets me an eight and a four. So four in box one is in one of two places, which knocks it out of this square. Feels like we might be able to do better than that, but I can't immediately see how. But I suppose these squares are two, three and four, aren't they? Just by Sudoku in this box, which seems to suggest that's a seven, that's a two, that's a five now. Five shoots over there and makes this a four, eight pair, which is lovely. This is five, this is four, this is not four. And we need five, six, and seven into, oh, five, I can just place. Five goes there. Five's in one of those. Six and seven is probably resolved by some knight's move, jiggery pokery. Look, I've got six, seven pair in this column. So this is from two and eight, and the only place for eight in the final column is there, which makes this four, this six or seven, it still doesn't want to resolve. So five, six, seven, five, six, seven. Now something, ah, that's six, there we go. Seven, 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 six, six. Oh, oh, look at this deadly pattern of fives and sixes. That must be resolved. Yes, thank goodness. Five, the five reaches in, otherwise we'd have had a problem. Now that's a, th oh, yeah. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, and I think we're on the home straight. We need three and six, six here, three here, seven here, four here. What a brilliant puzzle that is. That is a sensationally good puzzle. 86 people in eight days, wow. Wow, that's so clever. Tamar, Tamar Tanalet, um, if that really is your first ever puzzle, that is quite, quite remarkable. It's unbelievably brilliant. Um, the ideas around the fact that there had to be a common digit in yellow and then the fact you could work out what that common digit is by the fact one and two couldn't be in the circles. It's so subtle and brilliant, it really is. And the position of the cages is lovely as well. Anyway, I must rest my voice. Please do leave a kind comment for, for Tomata Narlet. They deserve it. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.